Hey, and welcome to another Theater Thursday with the Clarence Brown Theater. It's so good to be here. We're talking about the show Airness today. Once again, we're coming at you from Knoxville, Tennessee, the native lands of the Yuchi, Muscogee Creek, and Cherokee Nations. My name's Brady Muldrup. I graduated from the University of Tennessee in 2019, um, and I play D. Vicious in this production of Airness, and I'm joined today by our post-production team, um welcome guys hey brady welcome. Hey. rock on good to see you all um so let's start things off steve sherman our director our captain captain of the ship so we had a whole play rehearsed staged ready to go yeah. and then it got put on pause for about a year and it got brought back in a totally new fashion uh, tell us a little bit about directing this wild show. Yeah, we were so pumped. We'd done all the scene work. We had done all the air guitar numbers. I had worked on it for about seven months, you know, reading the script over and over and over, understanding the scenes and the characters and, and doing the air guitar choreography, uh, developing it from my living room uh, for each <laughs> character and then bringing it into the space and teaching you all. And it was so much fun. And there we were with a Polish play ready to go the air guitar numbers and the scene work and then we had to shut down a week before a week before tech rehearsals so you know normally um a, a show that is revived uh, you'll have pickup rehearsals maybe weeks or perhaps months later but the, in this case it was almost a year later but i thought you and the whole cast didn't miss a beat we had all that groundwork there and I, I think it came right back to you all and it was really cool to see we just needed to put the fairy dust right back on it and polish things up a little bit. So it was different, you know, doing the air guitar numbers in the theater, instead of having that live audience and, and feeling that energy and getting their laughs and their cheers. Um, you know, we shot it like a film shoot almost with with three cameras, but that was also really fun. And, and we had a lot of fun filming that and we're having a lot of fun editing it. And then the scene work, you know, it's hard to, to act in a chair in your own apartment with a little camera, right? It's, it's so different than acting with an audience and, and, and with your scene partners, they're right with you. So we had to find that energy again, despite this, despite the environment we were working with. So uh, it came with challenges, but I think I, our goal, I think, was to kind of raise the bar on the virtual theater game. And, and I think, I hope we've done that. I think that we have, I feel good about it. Um, but this whole virtual theater game, I mean, it's a totally new game. It's not a live stage show and it's not film either. It's a totally new breed of animal. Um, Joe, take us through a little bit what it's been like at the Clarence Brown creating this hybrid production. Well, I tell you, uh, none of us had done this before. I mean, this is, you know, we we are sometimes content creators and, and in, in theater we we create content and put it up on stage, but some of the digital media students have, have done some filming and and Steve's, Steve has had the most experience of us, of any of us doing uh, uh, some film shoots, but, uh, but this was all new and it was interesting and it was exciting to experiment and learn. You know, uh, here at the Clarence Brown Theater and the Department of Theater, we have a dual mission where we, uh, where all of our professional projects and all of working with professionals and teaching students at the same time. So we took this as a real great opportunity to learn to all of us, learn and teach and 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 make this happen. You know, we. Uh, uh, but the process itself was strange because it's under COVID. You know, so we we wanted to make sure that we did a safe safe project. So we had uh, normally in theater we have. 50 people in the room. We've got designers and assistant designers and technicians and board operators and directors and and crew members backstage and and a stage manager running running the rehearsal and the the, the performance itself and and uh, uh, this time we we stripped it down stripped it way down. We had eight people in the room. We had uh, a lighting designer creating cues. We had the set designer making sure that the, the set was functioning, but also that set designer was running one of the cameras. We had the stage manager who was running the rehearsal, but also running follow spot. We had another camera operator who was a dedicated camera operator. We had uh, the director um, 
uh, running the ship. And then we had two faculty members helping to uh, also run some cameras and also giving advice and, and keeping it, uh, uh, keeping the learning process moving forward. And then we had a performer and we did one performer at a time. And we did these nightly sessions where we brought in a performer and uh, everybody was masked. Everybody uh, was social distanced. Er everyone was uh, 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 sanitized and, and, and took precautions to be safe. Um, now, interestingly, all the rest of the people who usually are in the tech rehearsal in the theater space were actually there with us, but in their offices elsewhere in the Clarence Brown Theater, in shops and in offices, waiting to be uh, told when we needed help. They would. They were all on a Zoom call. We had a computer in the theater uh, on Zoom, watching the rehearsal while we were filming the, the rehearsal, uh, filming the shoot. And um, and if a costume had problems, we'd, we'd say, hey, can somebody from costumes come up and help us? Or somebody would come up or the actor would leave and we would just uh, uh, move forward. So we felt very, very supported, but it was a very strange experience because everybody was uh, elsewhere. Totally. And that was the space at the Clarence Brown. And then the actors all went home and filmed all the different scenes in between the air guitar numbers, filmed them all remotely. Uh, what, I mean, there were all sorts of how did how'd you go about that filming sure. remotely with all the different actors absolutely so so one thing that was important to everybody from from steve and the designers is they wanted uh they wanted to feel like everybody was acting in the same room and of course they weren't they were all you know uh, sort of virtually on it was Streamyard, but it's like zoom it's like everybody's in their home and it's all pieced together and, and um but to keep that unity and keep that feeling of all being together, we gave all the actors a big package that they went home with, uh, which was their costumes, their props. Their, there were multiples of some of the props so that one actor and another actor could also use the same props. And we had um, uh, each actor had a green screen, a, a ring light, a webcam, and earbuds that were all the same so that everybody's performance would look like it was filmed the same way. And then the lighting designer took great pains to make sure that, that everybody uh, that everybody had the same tonality in, in, in light, uh, which turned all of the actors, as, as you know, Brady, into technicians. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the set designer took pictures of the set uh, and we used those as uh, backdrops in a, in the green screen, so so it really felt like this sort of unified artistic expression um, that was as close to the uh, the film shoots in the theater that we could get. Totally, yeah, and it was really interesting becoming the remote technician. Bill would chime in and say, "Move your ring light three feet back and adjust it this much," and you're going, "Is this right?" And then you got to go again, "Is this right?" Um, but we did that for about five days. We filmed those scenes. And uh, so the scenes on StreamYard, as well as the air guitar numbers in person, filmed a ton of them. And then we handed all the footage to Chandler, our editor. Chandler, tell us about the editing process. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy because I'm like at the end of the process and it's kind of my job to kind of like piece everything back together. And for this project, we had like over a hundred pieces of footage from like the stream yard to the air guitar sequences to even like the good audio and like added sound effects that we got to add in post and everything. And just like piecing it all together to help tell this story in the way we want to kind of tell it through this new medium. And it's very important in my job to help that by like capturing the right choreography, the right emotional beats and the, keep the energy going throughout the show and capturing the, just capturing who these people are in the story of, of this whole, of all of Aranus. So that was like super important. And like throughout the process, I would talk to designers, making sure the shots looked right. Be like, hey, Bill, does the lighting match what you wanted envisioned? And it's just like, it's all this like making sure we kind of all have this unified vision that gets into this final project for everyone to watch. And one of the biggest things was uh, early in the process was generating this shot list, which kind of like, 
got nitpicky of just what we needed to film, how we needed to film it, and how we need to edit and put it back together. And like without that, the, this end process would not be as smooth as it was. And it's been brilliant because now it's just these, we have these nightly sessions of just going through the footage with me, Steve, and Joe of just switching where we want things to go, camera angles and such. And it's just been a lot of fun. Totally. That's awesome. All right, speed round. Favorite part of the performance of the show, go. Every character represents one pillar of air guitar. That's their persona. And I love each one of them kind of gets a big number. They're winning regional quarter, um, quarter um, qualifier. And I just love all those numbers. They were really fun to choreograph and they're so fun to, they were fun to watch you all perform and, and learn. And, um, and then when we added all the design, those are all my favorites. And then it accumulates with the, with the finale, so. My favorite thing is my 15 year old son, Max, who has been watching this process and who's, uh, who uh, has been sneaking into the room to watch some of the video editing uh, and just watching his eyes light up because it's so much fun. It's the rock and roll and he's having a blast. And particularly he's having a lot of fun because he gets to see his uh, high school drama teacher, Brady Muldrup, there uh, uh, <laughs> dancing away, which has been fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, for me, it's I've had a lot of fun editing the uh, um, um, Keep on Loving You guitar sequence because it's just you get a lot of those fun emotional beats in there in the choreography. I just It's just hilarious. So funny. For me, besides Max walking into class every day greeting me like this, it, it was getting from the uncomfortable nature of what it is to play air guitar in front of people going through it a bunch and then becoming really confident with it and really letting like letting loose and play imaginary guitar as ridiculous as it is it's it's been a blast um well, it, Ernest, thank you steve <laughs> um Ernest, you've still got two days to catch it it's running until the 17th and you can find more information at clarencebrowntheater.com post-production team joe chandler steve thank you guys so much for being here it's been a blast Thanks, Brady. Thank, Thank you. you. Of course. And keep coming back for more Theater Thursdays. Yeah.